fact is that building a closed app that's not part of the open web is to lock yourself away. And very few app developers these days care enough about the principles of the open web and open data to ensure that what happens inside the application is visible to the wider world. It would be possible to do that, you could design them to make that happen, but it's, it remains costly, it's too difficult, and the fact is the market seems to like closed limited apps that are locked off. Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of the web, has been very critical of this move, and he argues quite strongly that we should be building everything in HTML5. You can't do enough in HTML5 yet, and there isn't the expertise, it would be an option. But there are far too many competing interests around these sorts of devices for that to happen in a very simple way. Magazine publishers, as we heard, see devices like the iPad as a way to get people back in their control, to get them back paying, to retain that, level, that power over the audience as passive receivers who can engage only through limited channels that they are also in control of. The device in that sense is incredibly dangerous unless we break it open. And let's recognise the convenience of the form factor. As you said earlier when we were having a conversation, if we're standing here and I've got one of these things in my hand, you talk to me. If my laptop is open, there's a barrier. That, that piece of glass and plastic and metal creates a barrier between us. It disappears from the device. It's about social objects, isn't it? There are so many good things about the form factor, so many bad things about the technologies currently embodied in them. I'd like to think we could just sit here sometimes and wait for the technology to catch up with us so we have less and less effort before we're utilising all of these tools. My grandmother waited 86, 7 years before she ever touched a computer. It was this computer and she beat me at air hockey. That's pretty insane. It suddenly dawned on me how easy these devices are to use the intuitive nature that's coming along. Next. I think that's exactly my point though, is that when we look to devices, and applications, what we're dealing with is zero configuration implementation, just getting on with it. Nick, so how long before the big blocks that sit under people's desks still on top of people's desks, humming away with processors and, and hard drives, how long before we are actually carrying them all around with us? Uh, I think some of this goes into the second question we're talking about today, but I think if we already look to things like set-top boxes from the sky and the functionality that we're getting inside games consoles that are under our TV screens, we're putting cameras on top of our televisions now in order to sort of talk through uh, video conferencing tools, I, I see an awful lot of people just saying, well, I'll divide up what I need out of my applications. And the, the, the stuff that Bill's talking about, that open functionality in the back end, I don't think that has to go away. I just think we're, we're making the interface more meta so that users don't have to think about device drivers. Okay, Bill, explain that last bit. I wasn't listening, I was reading these tweets about the cult at Mass Media working on Loudmouth Man. Now, so, the distraction have, of these devices. Whether we should have a two minute hate at the end, you know, very George Orwell. <laughs> yes, oh that would be awesome, definitely, definitely. Uh, Orwell's birthday coming up on uh, June the 25th. I will be at his graveside with a number of people having a picnic in Sutton Courtney. We do it every year, talk about civil liberties. <laughs> that wasn't an advertisement, it was an invitation. We don't sell drinks, there is a pub to nibble. Nick, so move on, if you could, to ownership versus access. Explain about how we're more and more being paid to access content. Uh, I'm, recently I bought a record player. I missed the object. I missed the photograph on the front of that album. It's a beautiful thing. I missed the ritual of putting that on. Then I found an app that emulated nearly all of this. It even starts crackling at the beginning. B Bill saw it a minute ago, downloaded it straight away. It looks like a record player. You can scratch your records, drop the needle. Well, I, I think if you want to experience poor sound quality, you could just use Apple earphones and you get that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, no, um, the, the poor sound quality kind of drops away and, and you don't even Answering realize. the question at hand before we distract it by Apple content again, <laughs> though. <laughs> uh, I mean, once we're seeing a lot of people moving into owning our apps and owning our devices, then the next thing that people are encouraged into accepting is the sort of concept that, well, let's, let's have a subscription to this service. You, instead of owning bunches of DVDs and, and so forth, why don't you just subscribe to the service and download the, the movie when you want to watch it at Sky anytime or any does that for you. 
Uh, Netflix is doing that. If you're going onto your Xbox or PlayStation Network, if PlayStation Network's up, then you can hire things. So suddenly you're moving away from ownership of stuff into access to that stuff. And part of this is again a problem of DRM, which Bill quite rightly will bring up and say the open web is very important. The other half of this is the simple convenience of if I have a subscription and I can therefore get to the music right away, I change the nature of how I'm interacting with media. Uh, and I'll give a really good example of this. If you're planning an, an evening event where you traditionally sort of get your CD collection out and choose the music for the evening, most people now just buy a day pass to Spotify and sort of give people access to the playlist. When you say most people, say again. When you say most people, you mean like most people we know? Who, who you, hang on a second. No, I can. Who actually, uses I, streaming I audio say, in the room? I've been, I've been to parties of people who I would not traditionally consider to be technical. And their view is, oh, I just Spotify and people choose from the playlist. Okay. And, and so we're moving away from. I, I, I said the problem with this is that I can't go into somebody's house and say, here's the book collection, we know what they like. Here's their music collection, we know what they like. Now it might just be, we'll sort of see what their playlist is.